Hello everyone and welcome to our Systemization of Knowledge presentation, A Minimalist Approach to Formalizing Analog Sensor Security. This is a collaborative effort between Zhejiang University KAIST and the University of Michigan. Three of us will be presenting to you today, Chen Yan, Ho Xiao Shen, and myself, Connor Bolton. And with that, let's go ahead and get started. So there are an ever-growing number of systems that employ sensors, and these include things in manufacturing, uh, automotive, and the Internet of Things. These systems heavily rely on their sensor data to operate properly. And failure to secure this sensor output may compromise data privacy and security, and even user physical well being. Lately, there's been a significant amount of attacks that use physical signals to induce untrustworthy sensor output. And we call these types of attacks transduction attacks. Uh, these attacks have shown to be actually quite diverse. Um, just from those that within our labs, we use uh, lasers, ultrasonic waves, radio frequency waves, and more to manipulate voice assistants such as Siri or Alexa, uh, accelerometers and phones, for example, gyroscopes and drones, and LiDAR for autonomous vehicle systems. And these are just a select few of the attacks. There's actually been quite a bit more from produced by other labs. Our labs work together on several of these attacks and often discuss each other's work. In these interlab discussions, we realize several challenges common to this field of transduction attacks. Uh, one challenge is how the ubiquitous and heterogeneous natures of sensors necessitates that the sensors work in different principles, and therefore it requires unique knowledge to understand how each sensor operates. Uh, a second one is actually how two separate attacks on the same sensor may actually exploit completely separate physical principles. And last, there are just vocabulary and terminology differences and this is often the case in this kind of field because it's an intersection between several other different fields of research. And thus, there are times where we never even understood we were actually talking about the same principle. However, despite all these differences, we often found that most of the attacks shared conceptual similarities once we actually understood what each other were saying. And we just lacked a way to express these similarities. And this is when it became apparent that an SOK was needed and how this paper actually came to be. In our efforts, we first designed the simple sensor security model to help put all the attacks into a common language. And with this, we could compare and contrast different attacks, even attacks on different sensors. Uh, second, we used this model to systematize transduction attacks. And third, to systematize defenses for those attacks. And last, we show how analysis of past attacks in this model may actually hint at attacks to come and how this model may reveal when defenses for one attack actually translate to another attack. Let's get started from understanding what is a sensor and what is inside. A sensor is a device that outputs measurement in response to a specific physical stimulus, such as light or sound. According to sensor handbooks, a sensor consists of several essential electronic components, such as a transducer, amplifier, a filter, an analog to digital converter, and sometimes a processor as well. Considering a microphone, it contains a transducer that converts the physical sound of human speech to analog electrical signals, and the signals are amplified, low-pass filter, and digitized. The digital signals are encoded by the processor into auto file, which can be an input to us as systems, for instance. A transduction attack aims to make a sensor generate false measurement that does not reflect the reality. They do this by injecting malicious physical signals into the sensor, such as RF signals, sound, light, and so on. To put various transduction attacks into a common language, we build a simple sensor security model. The model has to reflect the common properties of sensors so that it can be applied to diverse sensors and transduction attacks. The model consists of two parts. The first part is a general sensor model. Our goal is to build a sensor model that can mathematically describe the sensor functionalities, and it has to be general enough for most sensors. After starting several sensor handbooks, we use transfer functions to model each component in a sensor. Transfer functions is a well-established mathematical tool for describing a system by the input and output, and it has been widely adopted for sensor design. The second part of the model is to add the adversary based on the general sensor model we have. Our approach is to model the malicious signals 
as an input to the transfer function of the effective component. Specifically, we model a sensor as a series of cascading transfer functions that each represent a component. A transfer function has two types of inputs, a regular input denoted in yellow and a noise input denoted in blue that unintentionally interferes with the regular input. The first transfer function is normally a transducer and the stimulus is the regular input. The output of the last transfer function will be the sensor measurement. For example, we can represent the four components of a microphone with four interconnected transfer functions. The initial regular input is a sound, and the final output is a digital audio. Noise inputs exist for every component. They can be either ambient noise or electrical noises. Based on the general sensor model, we can easily model adversaries by adding the malicious physical signals as intentional noise inputs to the transfer functions. The malicious signals may appear for any transfer function, and because of the chain of blind trust in sensor, their influence may propagate all the way through and affect the final sensor measurement. We model the generation of malicious signals with an adversary transfer function that takes input from the attacker. Dolphin attack is a transaction attack on microphones. This attack can make a microphone output malicious audio by injecting ultrasound. Using this attack, an adversary can inject inaudible voice commands and control voice assistance. We can easily describe Dolphin attack with the simple sensor security model. Sound is the regular input of a microphone. However, the malicious ultrasound can be modeled as an intentional noise input to the first transfer function. The beauty of the simple sensor security model is that researchers can use it to mathematically model basically every transduction attack in a similar way. A transduction attack can be factored into two basic steps. The first step, signal injection, describes how an attacker can inject malicious physical signals into a sensor's signal processing chain. Signal injection is a starting point of a transduction attack, but injected signal may be removed or lost as it goes through the signal processing chain. It is hard to ensure that the injected signal can affect the sensor output and generate the desired measurement. To overcome this challenge, many attacks use a second measurement shaping step. Such a step exploits the inherent properties of constant components to modify the injected signal. There are three major factors for successful signal injection. The injection point, signal type, and signal frequency. The attacker can inject malicious physical signals before or at the transducer, and she can use signals that are of the same type as regular stimulus. She can also inject malicious signals to components after the transducer. Such a wave of injection explores the connection wires as antennas that can unintentionally pick up RF signals. The signal frequency also matters. Sometimes the attacker has to sweep and find the best frequency that provides maximum injection efficiency. In some cases, the frequency can be outside the component's expected operating band. We term such cases as auto band injection. For example, Injecting sound above 1 kHz to MIMES inertial sensors is out of band because the expected motion signals are under 750 Hz. Measurement shipping staff exploits inherent properties of sensors' components to modify the injected signal. There are five common types of properties that have been exploited, including saturation, aliasing, filtering, intermodulation distortion, and envelope detection. To use these properties, the attacker has to create the injection signal in specific ways. For example, to trigger saturation, the signal amplitude has to be sufficiently high. The beauty of these steps we propose is that all transduction attacks can be defined by the combination of the steps you use. In this way, it is easy for us to compare and contrast various attacks. For example, Dolphin attack and ghost talk are both attacks on microphones. But this seems very different because dolphin attack is based on ultrasound and ghost talk use RF signals. But after extracting the fundamental steps, 
we can see that they're more similar than different. They both rely on auto band injection, IMD, and filtering as the core of attack. The only difference is that they use different types of signals for injection and explore different components for the IMD. With the above framework, we analyze the existing jurisdiction attacks that we can find and systemize these studies by the sensor categories that targeted the sensor components exploited, the signal injection and measurement shaping steps they use, and their attack outcomes. Please read our paper for more details. For defenses, mitigating any step in the attack chain will alleviate the entire attack. For example, of ghost talk, the entire attack would be relieved given a mitigation either to injection, the IMD step, or the filtering step. Therefore, we define defenses by the step they mitigate. In addition to this basic principle, we divided defenses into two largest categories, detection and prevention. Detection defenses simply detect the presence of an attack. We further divided these into two broad categories based on if they detected an injection or a measurement shaping step. TX randomization randomizes the transmission pattern of the active sensors like radars to resist attacks exploiting the predictability of the transmitted signal. Injecting malicious signals without knowing the random pattern to violate the expected received signal and can be detected. Verifying actuation validates the measurement by stimulating the object of measurement in a predefined manner and comparing the response with the expected one. If the sensor is being compromised, this will reveal the existence of the attacker. Last one, detecting out-of-band signals looks for any out-of-band signals in the signal path because they are apparently abnormal. The rest deals with measurement shaping steps. Saturation detection monitors if the input level remains in the expected range and alerts otherwise. IMD feature detection tries to seek unique symptoms of exploitation by IMD, like numerous images in the frequency domain. The other category of defense, prevention, allows proper operation even under an attack. Like detection defenses, we divide these into five broad categories. First, randomization can be utilized not only for detection but also prevention. For example, to prevent attacks exploiting aliasing, one might randomize sampling intervals. This will deprive the control over alias signal from the attacker. Shielding simply block unnecessary outer signals. It will be especially beneficial for sensors like inertial sensors, which have no need for exposure. Filtering comprises of every defense enhancing or introducing filters. Attacks originated from insecure stop band or pass band arrangement can be prevented by this. Sensor fusion incorporates the fusion of multiple sensor outputs, multiple frequency bands, or even multiple past measurements to enhance resilience. Component quality improvement collectively denotes qualitative enhancement of inert internal components. All these defenses can be systematized by our framework. We sort each defense from previous studies by their goals, corresponding categories, sensor component, injection and shaping steps they mitigate, and transfer function models. For more details, please refer to the paper. Additionally, user on model may hint at potential attacks. Let's go over a quick example that shows how one could combine two established attacks into a new third attack. Uh, the first established attack we're going to use is dolphin attack, which we've discussed previously. As a reminder, it uses ultrasonic waves to manipulate a microphone output. And it's comprised of three steps, uh, injection, intermodulation, distortion, and filtering. The, the second attack we're gonna talk about here, this established, is walnut. Uh, so this attack uses sound, which could be ultrasonic or within human hearing, to manipulate accelerometer output, such as accelerometers in phones. And it's also comprised of three steps, uh, preamplifier injection, filtering, and uh, aliasing from the ADC. And uh, at a glance, they first may seem different, but a closer examination shows they're actually uh, somewhat similar. The injection steps both inject amplitude modulated waves, while the measurement step shaping steps uh, collectively demodulate these amplitude modulated waves. So at a high level, uh, one could think, well, why not we just combine some of these steps and create a new attack? And that's exactly what we're proposing here. 
So we'd take uh, this injection step and these measurement shaping steps to create the new attack on a microphone, uh, like so. And uh, this is quite simple, and it shows how the methodology may be used to hint at some of these potential attacks, such as this one. However, what may be even more important, at least to me, is how defenses may be similarly predicted across sensors and sensor components. For example, uh, let's take this first uh, more established defense uh, for the upper attack, which is actually, once again, a uh, dolphin attack. And it filters the components introduced by the IMD step um, in the transducer to prevent malicious audio from leaking. However, this defense should also block a separate attack on microphones, Ghost Talk, which is the one on the bottom. Uh, we've also discussed it briefly. And Ghost Talk and Dolphin Attack may at first seem different. Uh, one uses ultrasonic waves, the other one uses radio frequency waves. In one, the IMD occurs in the transducer. In the other one, it occurs in the amplifier. However, viewing these through our model makes it clear that really conceptually these are very similar. They both just have an IMD step, no matter where it is. And thus this defense for IMD in one attack should work for the other attack. And this just kind of shows how the model reveals how these defenses may translate between attacks on uh, even different sensors. In conclusion, we have shown how the simple sensor security model enables easier comparison of transduction attacks. And second, using this model to systematize past work, we show that several of these attacks and defenses on different sensors are actually conceptually similar. And uh, last, we discussed how using our model to analyze past attacks can hint at future attacks and how to defend against them. And with that, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Feel free to contact any of us at any of the links that are, are listed here. And uh, feel free to attend the Q&A session afterwards. Uh, we'll remain socially distanced, don't worry. Uh, thank you once again, and have a nice day.